Hey friends, I am so glad to be here today and talk all about client journeys. So if you have noticed, I've made a little bit of a change here in the Facebook group and I'm trying to take specific topics that we're talking about inside the podcast. If you haven't heard or you haven't listened in, make sure that you listen into the Magnetic Entrepreneur podcast at season five. And my whole purpose with everything here is really to help you because I want to make sure that you're getting the support you need and part of doing that is turning off my phone, which I forgot to do, um, making sure that you get the support you need to be able to grow your business. And I love being able to just have you guys meet Megan. She's my coachee. So she signed on to work with me for six months. And part of that was also doing this podcast because she is very open and honest and also understands what it's like to be an entrepreneur and how helpful it is to be able to get an inside look at other people's journeys the things that they're going through, you know, how they feel about what's happening. Cause usually we just so over normalize the end result and we don't normalize the ups and downs, the messy and the magical that's happening along the way. That was always the purpose with the Be Heard podcast. And then in turning that over to the Magnetic Entrepreneur, of course, I'm always thinking, how can I do this better? How can I be even more supportive and this is a great way for you to listen in and hear what somebody else's journey is, get some actual practical tips because you guys, I know, you know, I like to just give it to you straight, what you can do, what you can try to apply this in your own business. And then I'll specifically be talking about those takeaways in Wednesdays, every, um, every Wednesday's episode is a takeaway episode. And then here inside the Magnetic Entrepreneur Facebook group, I'm pulling out some of those topics to really make it in more of a workshop format so that you can go deeper because well, I do not believe that there is one thing that's going to work for everybody. You know, there's not like a system that you could just take that and apply to your business and everything's going to work out. All right. I do believe that there's a process to creating your signature marketing system. This is a system that you use on repeat to be able to get clients. And it's about how you show up in a way that feels good to you. It's about creating systems and processes and strategies around the way that you want to show up. It's about all of these things and figuring out what really works for you. But I do believe there's a process. And so inside of this podcast and then inside of the group here, you'll be able to listen to what the process is and apply this to your own business. And then joining me here every Wednesday, you get completely free one-on-one -on -one coaching for any questions that you have, and they can be specific to the topics that we're talking about. But they can also just be some questions like you just need some support. So think of me as your business coach and join me here every Wednesday. The topic that we're talking about today, and then we'll have um, two more parts of this little series so that it really is um, bite size, is in creating your client journey. So you may be wondering, what is a client journey? In the simplest form, it is how it's thinking about where you want people to end up, which is the course working with you, but how you want them to get there. So if they start out with what we say is awareness, and then kind of in the middle is consideration. So consider awareness is where maybe you see something, let's say that you uh, see something on um, Instagram, and then you're like, hmm, that seems kind of interesting to me. Let me find out more and see if this is something that I really want. And that's where you go into interest and that's um, from into consideration and consideration is where you're actually thinking like, do I want this? Do I not want this? Let me read some reviews and you're, you're starting the decision making process. And then the last part, of course, is making a sale. So you really want to think about your business, where you want people to end up. What is the thing that you actually want them to buy? So let's just use an example. I'll say you're a web designer. And you want them to, of course, purchase a website. And then you think, all right, well, how do I even start that process? What is that client's journey? And you want to ask yourself, where would they initially find me? Okay. And then you want to think about this middle section as far as, well, how can I help them get from awareness? So just knowing who in the world I even am to consideration where they're like, hmm, could this be the right web designer for me? So you really want to think about that. And I feel like most of the time we I've seen people struggle with 
feeling like their their marketing's out of control or they're not sure why they're not getting conversions or you know maybe they just feel so overwhelmed i know a lot of entrepreneurs feel overwhelmed with the process of marketing their business and i think that your client journey is such a good place to start when you're like whoa 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 surely it's not supposed to be this hard right because for different reasons so maybe you're starting out and you are just taking you're in that pro that stage of your business where you're just taking in all the information like should I do this? Is this going to work? You know, you're experimenting, you're trying different things, you're trying to learn about marketing because like you didn't get a degree in that, right? All of those kind of things. And then there's another stage of business where you've done all of experimenting. So you have things that are here and there. And that's a lot of what you'll hear Megan talk about. And, and through our process of creating her signature marketing strategy, she'll say, oh, I feel I feel so clear on this now. And she'll say, well, I had already done this. And now I'm thinking, why did I stop doing that? So you may be in that phase of business where you just have so many different things that now they're all, they're not really connecting. You know, they're not, they're not really making sense. Have you ever gone shopping, especially if it's something specific, like you're trying to get things for a birthday party or something like that. And you throw a bunch of stuff in your car and then you're like, wait a minute, my card is so full. I need to look and see what I actually put in here before I go to the checkout line. That's another, that's kind of where a lot of other people fall. So when we think about our client journey, we want to really think about it from the end point backwards. So we want to reverse engineer this. We want to think, okay, where do I want people to end up? And if you sell multiple products, that's totally fine. Just focus on one at a time because when you focus on one at a time and then you have like a journey here and a journey here and a journey here, you'll see how, whoa, I can actually do a little cross marketing. I can switch things up so that I'm actually creating a clear path so that when people come in, so your top of your funnel up here, that I can help them make a decision which next path is best for them. So I really am taking them on a journey to where they get to the bottom of this funnel, this client journey in the end, it ends with us working together. So think about it as reverse engineering. Where do you want people to end up? What is it that you want them to do? What is it that you want them to purchase? And then start working backwards and try to figure out how people get there. I think a great place to start. So what we're going to do today is talk about how to just look at it so that you can start pulling us up some ideas. And then next week, we'll talk about how to actually start crafting it so that you're designing it. Because right now, there is some kind of journey. If you've made a single sale, then you've got some kind of client journey going on. And if you haven't, well, then you just haven't established your client journey yet. But if you aren't sure, if you aren't sure exactly how you, where you want people to go and be and how you want them to be led through down through your client journey, then it's impossible to create a strategy so that that actually happens. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, this sounds a lot like a sales funnel. Yes, it does. It's very similar. It's very similar. But I think that the client journey is helpful, like I said, if you are really kind of starting at the basics and you're like, okay, what is this client journey? Like, how do I want, what do I want people to do? Because your sales funnel to me is that next level where you're going to then add a little more strategy. You're getting a little bit more specific. So we want to be kind of general and figure out what we're doing. And then the next stage of that is creating a sales funnel where we can get more specific about the actual actions. You know, how specifically are we nurturing these leads to then get them into this next phase of the journey? I hope that that, that really makes sense. And one of the other things that we talk about inside of the podcast is a micro journey. So I don't want to overwhelm you guys and with all of that, but we will get into that because you can take the same concept and apply it in so many different ways. That's the other thing I love about the client journey, which is a little bit different than the way we traditionally think about a sales funnel. An example of this is, and I don't know what episode, maybe it's this one, maybe it's next week. It's kind of hard to keep up because we're about uh, two months out. Um, but we, we create a client journey for when people come into the Facebook group. And so that's what I was calling a micro journey. And you can think about that too, once you have this bigger, larger scale of, okay, this is what I want to sell. I know this is how I want people to have awareness about what I'm doing. I know this is where they're going to go when I am helping them move through to consideration. And then I know this is where they are going to end up, which is sales and working with me. 
when you have that micro journey, as you'll hear us do in the podcast, we look at, okay, where are places where people's journey is, it's not flowing, right? It's not flowing through our funnel. So we want to look at that journey and see how can we make some tweaks and changes to the journey so that it's more clear for them and it's more clear for us. For us, it's the point is to create a strategy. Clarity for them about the journey is that it just helps them see where they're going and have this big, bigger, broader picture, which I think a lot of times we forget is that sales is helping somebody make a decision. Um, selling is helping, right? We want to help people. And part of the helping process is just helping people make a decision by making sure they understand what it is that they're actually getting, how it's going to impact them, what their next steps are, because many of you also have a, a suite of services. So you don't just have this one thing. And even if you're like, oh, I don't think I have a suite of services. And a lot of ways you do, because in your client journey, you're giving value. So that's another way you can think about it. What a value am I sharing that gets people ready to make a purchase? So when you think, what does this person need to know, do, or understand so they are a thousand percent ready to take the next step with me? That's often a great way to create some piece of value. Also call it an opt-in that you share. Um, it could just be a whole strategy like this Facebook group really helps people understand who I am the kind of service that I offer, what makes me different from my other coaches, you know, if they're going to get a return on their investment. And so it makes them ready as part of their client journey. You can hang out with me on Instagram. You can listen to the podcast and then you can come into this Facebook group and you can get some free one-on-one -on -one time. You can also get a free 30 minute call with me. So I am nurturing people who are interested in hiring a coach and I'm giving away a lot of value, but as far as a client journey goes, you know, the next step after this, if you really want the most impact in your business, then you have to work with me one-on-one -on -one. and that is the end. So that's the client journey. So for me and my business, I feel like it, I feel like it's really clear and probably, you know, in a lot of ways similar to other people, but I'm very clear in my mind where I want people to go. So that doesn't mean that you can't just hop on my website and schedule a call with me and we can work together. Yes, that happens. I get a lot of business from referrals, but I also have a customer journey set up so that I really think about where would people come in contact with me? Okay. I could be the podcast. It could be um, Instagram. Those are kind of the two biggest ones, either me being a guest on the podcast or, you know, my podcast, there's kind of those upper branch things, which is Part of my sales funnel, but I'm thinking about my customer and where they are and how I can serve them best and how I can cultivate these relationships that really make the sales portion of this easy. So I show up here on the podcast to give lots of value and I'm always inviting people into the Facebook group. And the reason why I do that is because that is a huge part of my customer journey. When you're here, it's the next best thing to working with me one-on-one. -on -one. You can ask me questions anytime. I show up here every Wednesday for free coaching. I do these um, little mini master classes. You know, I am available and here and just so ready to support you. And that is part of my customer journey. So with all of that being said, I, that's what I want you to do is really reverse engineer this. Just let it be really simple and think and just set with that same kind of clarity, a brand new customer, you're leaving out the breadcrumbs for where you want them to go. Think about where you want them to end. So the thing that you want them to purchase, right? How you create the biggest impact for that person. And then reverse engine. It's like, I cannot talk today. Reverse engineering that. How do they get there? Okay. Think about it in just the simplest, like those little kid maps, right? Make a little map for yourself. All right. And then the second part of this is, Start to think about how you are generating these leads. Where are these people coming from? Because a lot of times where we are thinking that we're getting clients, it's not where we're actually getting clients. And sometimes we have to check in because what we think people want to know or hear to be able to engage with us is not actually true. So these are a few things that you can go through and just journal about them whatever your process is, along with thinking, right, first, what do you want your client journey to be? Reverse engineer that. And then two, these are things for you to consider. The first one is look at your last five or 10 hot leads. So this doesn't have to mean that they paid. 
This just means that they became a hot lead. To me, a hot lead is anybody who is in that consideration phase. If you are taking me up on a free call, then you're a hot lead to me. You're in the consideration phase, phase. And I'm not trying to pitch to you or get you to buy anything, but I know that you liked me enough or you valued um, the information that I was going to share with you enough that you that you took time out of your day, right? Then you your time is valuable. My time is valuable. So when we're coming together, then I consider you a hot lead. Again, it doesn't mean that I'm pitching to you. I actually don't do that. But it just means that I know that you are in the consideration phase, you know, at some point. And consideration can be wide, right? There's a there's a range of different consideration things going there. But we want to think about that space of consideration. So anyone who can be considered a hot lead is someone who took some sort of next step with you. And, you know, it depends on your business, too. It can be really early and maybe you don't have a whole lot of different points within your business, maybe they just got in the DMs with you. I feel like anybody who is going to stop what they're doing and try to engage with you qualifies as a hot lead. There's some interest there. I mean, obviously not if they're like, uh, you know, just trying to pitch you or whatever, but if they're genuinely engaging and responding to you, then consider that person a hot lead. You know, how can you take the next step forward? And when you have a very clear client, client journey, you know what that looks like. So if someone DMs me and says, you know, I really love this podcast episode. I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, you should come into the Facebook group and then we can talk about it. So it's a way for me to give value, but I also have that clear client journey. So I always know what the next step is. And that's really a game changer, guys. I mean, it really is. So think about your hot leads like anything, right? Don't shortchange yourself and think, oh, you know, it wasn't a sales goal. So it probably wasn't a hot lead. Um, so think about that. How did they find you? What did that process look like? I mean, really write it down. Did they, what kind of post did you write that they responded to? Um, how did the conversation go in the DM? How did you end the conversation? What happened next? So that whole process and what it looked like, how it got started. And then if they did become a paying client, also note that full process. What, what happened next? Did you um, get their email address. Did they get on a phone call with you? How many times did you have to follow up with them before they made a decision? And the last one is what objections did they have to buying? Because this is some amazing um, information. I know a lot of times we don't want to hear objections because I mean, really nobody does, even if you have a good attitude about it. I mean, you still don't want to hear an objection, right? It's always a thousand more times fun to hear, yes, I'm excited. I'm so ready to get started. But objections are really important because the more objections we get, the more we can not get objections. Like you have to get the objections to know how to not get objections, if that makes sense. Because when people are saying, um, you know, well, I just, I'm, you know, based on what they're saying, like, I'm not really sure if I'm going to get a, um, get a result from this. If they say, well, I feel like it's not the right time for me. And then you say, instead of being like, oh, okay, sure thing. Uh, let me know when it's a good time. If instead you actually ask and say, well, why would you feel like now isn't a good time? Then you can get really great information. Maybe your course is too long, right? Maybe they need the information delivered in a different way. Like maybe they want it to be audio and your course is visual. And so that's some really great information. Um, don't just think about this as price point because that's that's usually not the thing. But if you if you were like, oh, okay, well, I feel so uncomfortable talking to people about money, so I'm not going to ask any questions, that would be the end of it. But if the person says, well, you know, I just, I wish you had a payment plan, then it's like amazing, right? You're so glad you got that objection because you can put that in there. And so that can become part of your client journey is choosing a payment plan, right? So that's how you can start with this broader um, client journey. And then we're going to narrow in and we're going to go deeper and further with this until we actually have some real strategy that we can apply to this whole entire funnel. So client journey becomes your funnel. And then we're going to take it and create a strategy and be really specific about, okay, now what can I do? And how can I make some tweaks here and do some changes here to actually make this work for me? So again, just reverse engineer. Think about it in a broader scope of where you want people to end up and then how do you go backwards and go from awareness through to consideration down to sell. So there's more little uh, pieces to this. 
and I actually put up a cartoon that I think it went up today. That's really funny. That kind of talks about this, but it's a, it's a marketing, um, I don't know, just like a regular <laughs> thing in marketing that people talk about a lot of times, but I don't think that, I don't think it comes across as something that is very easy to, you can understand it. It is not always that easy to apply to your specific business. So if anybody has questions, this is your time to ask questions about anything in business or anything about your client journey. If you want to get some more specific information for you, but this is a great exercise and I will be here next Wednesday at two and we'll continue this. So the step one, reverse engineer it. Make sure to ask yourself these questions. Again, like how to think about those last five to 10 hot leads so they don't have to be paying clients, but at least hot leads. Um, how did they find you? What did the process look like? How long did it take them to become a paying client if this one is applicable to you? And what objections did the clients have that didn't buy? And see how that kind of works out for you. Don't forget to bring your questions. If you're not joining me live today, then you can always leave the questions in the comments and I will come back to answer them. And so I'll see you next week at this same time. And I want to hear from you what kind of things, what kind of questions are coming up from you about this process, um, things that you might want to share that are working for you, some things you might want to share that are not really working for you. We can talk about it all here. It is a great space to do that and get some additional support. And again, if you haven't listened to the Magnetic Entrepreneur podcast, make sure and go take a listen, leave a rating and review to show Megan some support for just sharing everything with you guys, because I know that it's going to be so helpful to so many of you.